In this lecture, we study a particular subdivision surfaces method. This method is called catmull clark subdivision surface technique, which is often the preferred technique for generating smooth surfaces from a controlled mesh with a relatively small number of points because it is simple, predictable, and has desirable properties such as each original point affects only a small part of the surface, so hence we can move different parts of the surface in different direction very easily. This is roughly up to the e each neighbor of the point, so if we move one point it will affect its neighborhood only. The second desirable property that catmull clark subdivision surface technique has is that it's the first derivative is always continuous. Now as you know, the definition of a smooth surface is that its derivative does not change suddenly and which is exactly what we are saying here that the first derivative is always continuous that means it changes smoothly and it never changes suddenly the last desirable property is that the second derivative is nearly always continuous the curvature second derivative is basically curvature the rate of change of normals that doesn't change suddenly. The, the exception is at extraordinary vertices where the mesh is irregular. It does not form a grid of quadrilaterals. Such vertices are marked in blue in this mesh. So meshes should usually have mostly quadrilaterals. Having mostly a grid around the mesh makes it easy to adjust. It always tends to smooth well. One way to create meshes like these is by extruding a cube as in the YouTube tutorial in part 2 of the project. Also see other Blender tutorials on this. To keep things manageable, we work with relatively few control points. Just enough to accurately create the desired smooth shape. Loop subdivisions are often an easy way to add a few points when needed. To add many new vertices, subdivide the whole mesh one level. You can also select edges to, uh, to subdivide, although this can cause irregularity. It is often better to do the whole area or loops at once. Then apply smoothing subdivision just before exporting or before adding an armature or skinning animation. We will study armature and skinning animation later in the next series of lectures. To easily swap between different levels of subdivision, use the multi-resolution modifier, which, rem uh, which remembers fine detail while editing earlier subdiv subdivision levels. For 3D detail, you can try the Sculpt tool. Now we are talking about Blender over here. Now details of the technique itself. How does the technique work? And this is from the original publication of uh, Catmull and Clark, who proposed this method for uh, making 3D models using subdivision surfaces. Consider old vertices to be denoted by O and new vertices to be denoted by X. So these are all old vertices and these are all new vertices. After one subdivision step, there is a new vertex for each old face. So every old face, face is basically a full quadrilateral or uh, triangle. So for each face, we get a new vertex. Each old edge also gives us a vertex. So for this edge, we will get a vertex. And every old vertex will also give a new vertex. So this means that our number of vertices is going to significantly increase after one iteration. Now this is our old surface and below it is our new surface. After one subdivision step, there is a new vertex for each old face, old edge and old vertex. Now we have used color coding to denote which vertex has resulted as res uh, from from where so this one has resulted this red vertex has resulted from this face 
Now I'm going to change colors to match the colors of what I'm talking about. Now this new vertex, the blue one, has resulted from an edge and which is this edge. I'm going to change the colors again and this one has resulted from an old vertex which is this one the nearest vertex here so for every old face we get a new vertex for every old edge we get a new vertex for every old vertex we still get a new vertex on the old surface there are nine faces so there are nine new vertices marked with red circles on the old surface there are 12 edges see the blue thick lines over here so for each of these 12 edges there is a new vertex marked with blue circle hence we get 12 new blue circles on the old surface there are four vertices four inner vertices the outer ones are not considered because that's the end of the surface so there are four new vertices marked with filled green circles this 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 and this so calculating calculating them all together we have 9 plus 12 plus 4 is equal to 25 new vertices formed from the previous uh, ones now let's refer to the new vertices as points so the, we will call the new ones as points and the old ones as vertices so that we can understand the process how they are placed new face points are at the average of the vertices for the face so take the old face find out its vertices the four vertices of the face and take their average that's where going that's where we are going to place the new face point the new edge points are at the average of the two vertices on the edge and the two face points on either side of the edge so it's not just the average of the vertices it's also the average of the two faces on either side for example uh, if you're considering this edge we will take the average of these this point and this point as well as the average of this and this hence we get a point over here and not exactly in the middle of these two uh, vertices the placement of new vertex points is a bit complicated so let's go to the next slide to see how it is placed for a vertex P a new point is placed according to this formula f plus 2 e plus n minus 3 multiplied by P divided by n now here n is the number of edges that connect to the vertex P consider this is the vertex P then F is the average of the face points. Now the face points that are connected with this, this uh, vertex P. Now we have this face, this face, this face, the original faces. And we take the average of the face points. So this point, this point, this point, and this point. The average of these points will form F. E is the average of the edge points. Now this edge is connected with this vertex, this edge, this edge and this edge. So there will be four edge points corresponding to these edges. So we take the average of those four edge points and that will form E. So we multiply that by two as well. So hence we are giving double weight to the edge points. And then N is the number of edges that connect to the vertex P which is 4 in this case 4 minus 3 is equal to uh, 1 I mean it, uh, in some uh, cases it could be more than 4 and we multiply that number with P P is the vertex itself and then we divide this with the number of edges which is connecting the vertex P which is 4 and this will give us the position of the final edge point uh, sorry final vertex point which is this one in in this case Mark, positioned at let me change the color positioned over here 